Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. I'm continuing to work on a series of reels that were sent to me. This one is a Shakespeare reel uh, about the 1990s. Uh, Surf and Pier 60, and that's actually a great description of this reel because that's what a size 60 reel should be. Surf and Pier. It's big enough for salt water, for good for casting, a nice long cast spool, and uh, this one's pretty rugged. So this one is in the uh, style of a Shakespeare Alpha. And the reel is, uh, generally speaking, it's usually a one ball bearing reel with a big main gear. This one holds a uh, heavy line. It holds 15, 20, and 30 pound test. And at the 20 pound uh, monofilament line, it holds about 180 yards. So it is a bigger reel. And uh, they remind me of uh, a reel that was uh, probably the predecessor to this, which was the Shakespeare Pro Touch which is when they first started getting into the graphite casing as opposed to the, uh, the metal casings of some of the earlier reels. Well, we're going to start this uh, service uh, video on how to do that by uh, taking off the exterior pieces and parts. And as I do that, I want to encourage you to subscribe to my uh, channel if you like the art of reel repair, if you like to see how reels are made, learn a little bit about the manufacturing history of them, and a little bit about how to service them, well, then this is the channel for you. And if you subscribe, uh, you'll see all the videos that I post. And if you hit that notification button, you'll get uh, notified immediately of the uh, posting. And, uh, well, you can make a decision as to whether you want to uh, view that or not. All right, so what we're doing here is we're testing. So this is in the off position. This is in the on position. So we don't have an anti-reverse either way. And we don't have a bail that's tripping. So uh, this is kind of similar to the situation that I just had with one of the other reels that were sent in. And we're going to see if we can do our best to, to make that work. So in order to do this, you want to first remove your handle and your side plate. The handle comes undone by turning it in a clockwise manner. This is a um, handle that can be switched on both sides. And then if we look up under here, well, that, uh, that side plate looks like it comes off underneath the rotor. So we come up top here, and we want to remove the shim washer that controls line height. And we want to remove that little click ratchet underneath it. And when I take the pieces and parts off, I put them into a parts tray. In this case, I'm using a fast food container as that parts tray. And uh, that helps me to keep track of them. Now, this one's usually pressed on, so you want to just grab it with the, the pliers. And generally speaking, you can walk that up. And just, gen just looking at this, we might be able to get this side plate off without taking that out. So let's take a look. This one's kind of indistinct because it's got a black side casing on it. It blends right in with the rotor. And, uh, well, we'll find out. There's a lot of different setups and causes for why that anti-reverse might not be working. There's, generally speaking, the, I think the bail issue is going to be a bent bail wire. So we're going to find that out as we do the work on this. In order to do that work, you need to get the rotor off because those bail arms are held in with um, C-clips or E-clips. When I take the side plate cover off, I'm putting the screws onto my table. I want to make sure that all the screws are the same size before I put them into my parts tray. They are. Let's see if we can get this off or if it's tucked under the rotor. It's a little tough. I'm going to use a, a knife to uh, separate. And yep, it's under the rotor there. So we have two options here in terms of getting this off. One of them is to kind of wrench that off. And that's pressed on, as I mentioned. You can work it that way. The other option is fairly simple. It's just to take a, an open-end box wrench, bring it in underneath. Once you get the right one. You want to work that off and then you can pull up on that 
that will release your side plate. There you go. Well, this is a large main gear. You can see that uh, from the looks of it. I don't know what exactly the, the ratio is. Now I'm going to spin it down so that I can get to my crosswind block. Just remember how you did that with that uh, shaft. And again, you can pull that off. That uh, click ratchet is pressed on there, but sometimes it's just easier doing it this way. Now we can remove the axle shaft. We can remove the metals now. There's a couple of different little pieces that just came out there. One was the nut holding the rotor on. This is your cross wind block. And if you were paying attention, you know that the wings go up on this. But you want to clean all that old grease out of the inside of that cross wind block so that when you go to reinstall, it's a nice clean piece. This is our oscillation gear. It sits on a stud in the back of the case. You want to wipe that off. You also want to check the teeth around the face of that. And this one's a little different. It doesn't go all the way through, and the teeth aren't all the way through on this either. So just uh, make a note of that. Those parts go into my parts tray. Now we can take this big gear out of there. And again, what we're seeing here really is that the wheel has not been serviced in quite some time. We're also seeing the cause of the issue here with this anti-reverse. We're missing a spring on the back of this. So there should be a spring riding in here that tucks into the little cavity here. And for some reason that's gone. I don't know why that is, but it's gone. Well, we're going to have to go into our parts tray, see if we can even find that piece. One thing we know is we're not going to find it online from a parts reseller. Those simply don't exist. And uh, with the rest off, we can take this off. And uh, before I go much further and spend a lot of time on this, I'm going to uh, shut the camera off, see if I can find a little spring. Actually, I'm, I think I'm seeing the spring. I am seeing the spring. Oh, there you go. So somehow the eccentric spring got moved out of the way. It's hiding in the back here. Couldn't imagine why somebody would remove that. But I've seen stranger things there. All right, well, we can then. We'll keep moving along as soon as I get the spring out. Not an easy task in and of itself. Well, I'm going to put that out this way. There's no sense forcing anything. I'm going to remove that little lever because the spring is hiding behind it. There we go. So this is the spring I was referring to that's missing. I don't know how that fell off, but it did. Now I'm just going to put that right back on here, that lever. Then we'll go up top, pull the stem of this out. There's two, uh, two screws and a bearing. Let's go remove that. I guess we can continue on with this too. So I apologize if this seems a little fragmented today, but it's just uh, kind of jumping around for some reason. Oh, that's all right. There's no, no right sequence to do this, but the right solution in the end is to make sure all of your pieces and parts are cleaned and that you're... Uh, you don't have any broken ones, I guess, as I noted, if that uh, spring was missing there, well, you'd pretty much be done with your project right, right then and there. This spring has the point that goes out, so you can see right in the back of this wheel here. Let's get that back on, just like that, and that, that's how it should be. And that little fork is going to go right in that slot there. So we want to make sure that that's okay before we go too much further. Well, if you have a question on this reel or any reel in particular, if you leave it in the comment section, I will try to answer that question for you. This one has got an older anti-reverse technology. Some of the reels that you'll see will have a spring-loaded dog up top here where we're working, which would have been under the rotor, but uh, some do not. So just be aware 
as you, uh, you work on the wheels, take pictures and use those pictures as a way to determine where the uh, pieces and parts go. All right, we should be able to move this whole s section out here. And then we want to note the orientation of this. So we have our pinion gear and those little slots on here, that's your anti-reverse cog. That's where this hammer right here, you'll see it come in and out of the case there. Maybe uh, you can see that moving. That's going to lodge itself in any one of these grooves to stop the reel. All right, got that. I'm going to test the ball bearing, make sure that's working. It is. I'm going to oil the ball bearing. I oil bearings, I don't uh, grease them. Particularly if the reels are going to be used in the surf. I just uh, find that the grease tends to hold dirt and, the, uh, and it starts to become abrasive. Maybe if it's a sand type of a substance. All right, we're just cleaning out the, the grooves on this pinion gear. I'm using a pick to slide down through those slots. I'm rubbing out the old grease onto a paper towel. We'll wipe it down completely now. I'm going to re-grease. I'm using Pen Precision Real Grease for this. I'm going to re-grease it because it's obvious that this reel has not had grease in a while. It was kind of talking to us like that when we tested it. All right, get the grease on there. We're going to reverse the process then. I mean, the bearing goes back on, then this little collar goes back on, then the piece goes into the reel, and then our collar goes back on. And then we can put the screws and the collar on. It's best to get these pieces off your desk and onto the reel pretty much as soon as you can so that you don't lose them. You don't knock them around. Now in this case I didn't bother to put them into my parts tray because I sort of knew this is what I was going to do. That was my approach. But uh, if you plan to take some time away from the reel between taking it apart and putting it back together and by all means take pictures of where you are in the process and make sure that you go ahead and uh, label them mark them accordingly so that you know where they belong I'm of course taking pictures here with my video you can use cell phone digital camera or any picture taking device that you like. Okay, that's that section. We're in good stead there. We want to clean the case. There's old grease. I don't know when the last time was that this reel was serviced. Based on some of the issues we're seeing here, it's probably been a while. And uh, we want to make sure that when we service this, that uh, it lasts for quite some time to come. Looks like the bushing may have pushed out a little bit. Yeah. So we want to push that bushing back in. There you go. Nice snap there. Sometimes that bushing gets caught on the back end of the main gear when it comes out. And uh, if you don't put it back in that way, well, you're going to have a little bit of trouble there. All right. We've cleaned the main gear. I want to go ahead and grease that up. I use an artist brush to apply the grease. There's all kinds of different tools you can use to do that. I've just become kind of a fan of artist brushes of late. The hairs don't fall off of them and the uh, it, it gives you a pretty good equal distribution of the grease. All right, back here for the, what's going to sit on the stud. I'm going to get some in the teeth. That, teeth on the oscillation gear are going to be driven by this one on the back gear here, the back end of the main gear. And you want to get grease onto the face because when you put that grease on the face it'll enable your cross wind block to slide. All right, a little bit of grease onto the back end of that. 
We're going to take our cross wind block now and make sure that we get grease back in where we removed it. And the cross wind block, in this case, you got two pieces that are going to ride up along the shoulder, so get grease on those. And as we mentioned, that's the orientation of that. And that's how that cross wind block will sit in your reel. It's got the two wings out, it's going to ride on the side of the case here up the rail on the case on the other side here so you can put a little bit of grease on there if you like and then what you want to do here before you go much further install that main gear you'll notice we put the cross wind block on the stud all the way below grab your main gear now with that angle piece hopefully you can see that and you want to install the angle piece right in there well how do you do that well the manufacturer gives you a little window to look through. That's what this is all about on the front end here. That window there, if you put that angle piece so that you can look through the window, you can align that properly with the slot in that anti-reverse and then know it's seated. So that's the way that you do that. I would guess, maybe, I would hazard a guess, that the reason why this uh, Kind of didn't come fully circle as it was and maybe got knocked off is that uh, well it just wasn't uh, wasn't assembled that way the last time it was serviced okay now what we should see is this move in and out and you can see now that the anti-reverse hammer is moving in and out that's the piece on right there winding it pulling it in winding it pulling it in all right, so we have our anti-reverse in, kind of working our way backwards now, but before I go too much further, I want to deal with this bail while it is off the reel. I want to remove the bail wire. Then there's going to be a little line roller and a little uh, hold to that. And I want to put that out of the way for a moment. I want to bring the bell wire down. That's interesting, it's on the other side of the trip. I'm just checking to make sure that the trip works okay. So most of the time that you wind up with a bell that is failing is because it's bent out of shape. This one clearly is not rounded properly. And if you look out here, you're going to see that got quite a bend to it so what you want to do is you want to restore this by rebending the wire it's pretty easy to do but you got to take the tension off that bail wire otherwise you're going to get that jam point that you had before so this is much more circular now And now you'll notice how it lines up without any tension. All right, so we can go ahead and we'll bring the line roller back on, put the little carrier back on, put the screw in this side. Line the screw up and see what we can do with this. Okay, once you've done that, I like to spray a little bit of oil into the seams. Penetrating oil. We'll work the bale. So we've rounded the bale over into what should be shape. Let's see what happens. We can ooh, turn them right away. Very good. All right, so we bring it over and make sure it trips. There you go. So that's how you're going to run that piece. Well, the other pieces fell out. So let's go put those right back in. Make sure that you get that cross wire block on the stud. Time to go line up that uh, angle again, sort of like a recap of what we just did. Let's go put that back on. Look through your hole to make sure that it's aligned with that hole in the stud. Now we got two things we want to do. We're going to bring this case back on. Now remember, you could have taken this off. I, I just left it on. It's easier that way. But I do know that you have a little bit of a balancing act with this one. So you just want to make sure that uh, as you're going to do that, that you uh, 
follow the steps that you took it off with, which was threading your rotor nut onto the post before you reinstall that there. And now, what you want to do is you want to bring the axle shaft down and center it into your cross wind block like that. Go ahead and get that cross wind block screw now. And if you've been using your uh, parts tray, you know exactly where that screw is. So no panic in terms of where did that little guy go. Just like that. And remember when we took this side part off, we had to raise this up, right? So you want to raise that up to bring the side plate case in. On the side plate you have a couple of shim washers. Make sure that those go back onto the main gear. And then you have a bushing, so you really don't need to do anything with the bushing. And we'll put a little bit of grease on there. We're going to bring the side plate on. Make sure it snaps in place nicely. Now we're going to lower the rotor. And we know we have the nut to tighten on that rotor. So what you want to do is spin the, spin the reel now so that the axle shaft moves up. It gives you that ability to go tighten that nut down. And I'm going to hand thread this now. And if it's not on camera, I'm going to really apologize. But some things you just can't capture and do at the same time. All right, well, we pretty much have that tightened by hand. So we're going to go ahead now and we're going to tighten it the rest of the way. We have four case screws now. We know that they're all the same, so it doesn't matter which side of the reel they go in. So while we're doing that, let's recap what we did. We got a reel in. We had two problems with the reel. The first was that the anti-reverse did not work. The second was that the bail did not trip. The first one was solved because, well, initially we noticed that we didn't have that eccentric spring that comes off the back of the main gear that drives um, that little uh, dog for the anti-reverse. Well, we found that in the case. We got lucky because, quite honestly, if we didn't find that in the case, parts are not available for this reel due to age and due to the, the reel itself. The, uh, so we got lucky. We found that. We showed you that how to reinstall it. We showed you the little window in the main gear, and that little window gives you a, a view into that slot on the anti-reverse dog where that needs to be seated. We did that, and then we show you how the hammer works once that's seated properly. And we went up top, and we found out that the bale was pretty badly bent. Well, now it's, it's still a little bent, but it's in better, better shape than it was. And, uh, well, we showed you to rebend it to take the tension off of the spring so that allows the uh, arms to flow freely. And then we, had, we put some penetrating uh, oil onto the joints, worked it so that it flipped nice and easily. And uh, we uh, pretty much have solved the issues here. Well, before I put that handle on, I'm just going to put a little bit of uh, cleaner on. This is pen rod and wheel cleaner. And uh, that, that'll take off some of the years of the, the grime and foam and the like that accumulates from usage. And I like to do that just because, well, you never go wrong with a clean wheel. But if you leave things sit, they tend to contaminate pieces and parts and the like, and then it just becomes problematic. All right, well, just a simple buff. I'm going to go ahead and put that handle back on now. We'll give it a turn. It should be working fine now. Looks fine, and it's actually a pretty nice smooth wheel for a single hole bearing wheel. Let's come over to the drag stack for a moment. You can see there's a little clicker here. That's going to make the noise when you uh, get your drag washer running out. That's going to be because it's bouncing off of this click ratchet here. And you want to find, in this case, there's a, a big C-ring sitting in a slot here. Go ahead and grab a pick, work it in through that little hole on the side. Hold it because that's a spring and it's going to trip out on you and may fly. I think we probably have felt or Teflon washers in here, so let's give it a look. First thing you want to do after you remove the drag stack is to clean inside. 
The biggest issue with drag washers is the dirt gets in there. And well, if dirt gets in there, things like this happen. Those things are kind of locked on there. And you're going to have to break them off. And I use a little razor, kni razor knife to do that, utility knife. And this is all a function of what happens when the reel is not maintained for a while. The washers dry out. The grease that's on there acts as a glue. And well, you lose your drag that way. Well, these are you, these are plastic. You don't need to do anything. But one of the things you need to do is what we're doing here. You need to make sure that they're clean, free of debris, and uh, capable of, of going on. So I'm just going to rub that off. There's only a little bit of a, a surface on there, but it's enough to bother the function of the reel. Then what you want to do is you want to take your steel wool in this case and just buff off the areas where it was sticking to these. If they stick, what you wind up with is just a single drag washer that doesn't perform. It basically just locks everything down. So here's our set then. We have three drag washers that are plastic and Manufacturers do that because, well, they know that this is an entry-level reel and folks aren't going to maintain these like they were some of the others, so they basically go with a maintenance-free one. First washer in is a fabric washer, then we go with a round keyed washer, then the second washer goes in, and then we have an eared washer, the third washer goes in, and we have that other cap washer that's going to go up top. So how did all this stuff get in here to um, cause a problem? Well, the drag knob is not sealed here. Water from the line coming down onto the spool is going to run inside this lip. It's going to run right down those little holes and it's going to settle on the drags because there's really not any place for that water to go. So that's why you need to service your drag washers on a regular basis and uh, not just assume that, well, they're, they're plastic, they won't need any service. Well, they do. All right, round piece, find the groove in the spool. Most of the time you can get these in by hand. Sometimes it's a little more difficult, depending on the tension on that spring. That's how it goes. If you've lost that spring, well, you can still live with it. That spring is a retention spring so that they don't fall out. If you don't have that spring, they'll fall out. But you're going to keep tension on that with your uh, adjuster knob. So you don't really have to worry it too badly. All right, we're going to put this back on. We'll make sure that our drag stack is working. And we'll give the reel a final test. All right, well, one more turn. Yep, lock down. Then back your washers off so you don't press them on like what happened here. All right, time for a test then. A lot smoother than when it came in. Let's put that bail on. The bail flips. I just noticed a little bit on that bell I need to tighten that just a little bit more. There we go. Alright, that's it. That's your Shakespeare Surf and Pier. We have our anti-reverse working. We have our bell working. We have a reel that's got a second chance. I hope you've enjoyed that. If you did, please like it. And again, please subscribe if these are the types of videos that you like to see and you haven't already subscribed. To our first responders and essential personnel, thank you for everything it is that you do to keep us safe. To everyone, please stay well and stay watching and have a great day. This is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle.